Hi, everyone. Uh, let me know if you can hear me. I always have uh, trouble like setting up these lives. I just don't do them frequently enough. And yeah, it's kind of hectic. So <laughs> just kind of running around. Um, but I got, I just finished opening the actual packaging for the clay to pearl. I haven't gotten to the cases, so I'll show you how everything comes packaged. And I didn't put anything on my eyes because I thought we could try one of them out. We'll swatch everything. If you guys have comparisons, you can let me know and we can go through those. I'm so glad they came so quickly. Thank you, Shop Runner. <laughs> so, all right. So I picked up seven of the new Clay to Poe quads. And you can purchase these either as, you know, case and quad together, which are over the $110. Is that right? And then, or you can purchase, um, you can purchase the case separately for 35 or the refill for 75. So they are refillable. They're not magnetic. They are a click in and you can see kind of here on the edge, do you see this lip? So that will like snap in. There's a lip on the two longer sides and then it's smooth on the shorter sides. So we have six grams of product each, a two year shelf life. And these are made in Japan. So this one here is number two, Beach Pebbles. So how, how are all of you guys today? Got Sadie in the crate. She has been super, sorry, I'm just fixing my chair. I sit on one of those like wobble chairs. So um, it doesn't fit under the desk super well. But anyway, she's been, she's been crazy today. So um, she's been sleeping all week. So she's been like rowing a ton. And today she finally had like a ton of energy. So uh, let's start off with the packaging. And we'll definitely I see Nancy, the purple quad, we are definitely going to compare that. But let me show you how everything arrives. So this is one of the boxes for the case, the boxes for the eye quads. Oh, I left that on the bed over there. This is, I film in the guest room, but that's, it's just a shorter box, but it also has this little tab here, pull off your plastic. And then when we open this up, now when you're ordering from the Clay Depot website, you can only order three of the cases at once. So I had to split mine in two orders. I purchased seven of the quads though. So I did purchase one as a refill. So we have, you know, your typical Clay Depot cases, which I... I don't love this material personally. I, I feel like it's kind of not as smooth as I would prefer, but this is the new packaging here. It's really pretty. You can see there's no labels on here. It's definitely going to be a fingerprint magnet, but it's really gorgeous. Okay. So I think mine was already depressed. Yeah. So you do have a button to depress here and then you have a space here for two of the applicators, the mirror here, there's a piece of plastic sitting on here and you can see where this is going to clip in. You can see like little clip marks. You see those right here. So we've got four of those little clips essentially for to snap in. Applicators, we get a foam tip applicator and a little one side's a brush and one side is a foam tip applicator. And you can see the white and the black here. These are about the same size. So I think those are the same. And then obviously you know, brush versus pointed applicator. So let's go ahead and snap one of these in real quickly, but let me show you how the refills come. So they come in this plastic. This is the heavy duty plastic that the refills came in before. So if you're familiar with those, you can totally keep your quads in this packaging. It's heavy duty. You don't need to buy a case unless you want to. So it, you know, you can easily pull it out. I was kind of hoping these would be magnetic and I could put a whole bunch of these in a big pallet instead of having the individual cases, but I ended up picking up six of the cases since that's not the, the situation here. And yeah, so this plastic, I actually, um, I have some of the clay to blushes still in this packaging because they ran out of cases when I was purchasing and, you know, they were out of stock for quite a while. So I just never got around to putting them in cases and it's been totally fine. So um, this one again is number two, but let's start off with the ones that I have. 
So this one here is number one, Sand Dune. I mean, look at this. This is the one that I really, really, really wanted. So let's start off swatching it. It feels silky to the touch. And you can see that that, it's, it's not a... It's not really a taupe or a champagne. It's kind of a mix, the two together. This second shade here is, it's got a bit more brown in there and it's not quite as shimmery. You can see it's also gonna be deeper. And then this shade here, the bottom left-hand shade in every one of these palettes is considered our primer. So you can see the kind of the texture on my finger here. It's a little bit creamier. You can see while I'm touching it here, you can see that it's behaving more like a cream product. So this is essentially gonna be your eye primer and it doesn't really show up too much on there. And then our last shade here is gonna be a deeper brown. So this is number one, Stand Dune. And, you know, it's gonna be your cooler tone browns, you know, a little taupey, but, you know, honestly, I thought there'd be a little bit more of a gray hue to some of these shades than there are. These are definitely cooler tone browns, but I wouldn't really say necessarily a true taupe, if that makes sense. So, hold on, I gotta, yeah. All right, so let's take a look at number two, Beach Pebbles. And this one, I, I couldn't decide if I should get it or not. Like, I was going back and forth because I wasn't sure if it was going to be too similar to the uh, number one sand dune. I mean, it is definitely a warmer version of it. This here is our primer shade here. You can see that the primers between the two, the one in sand dune is a little bit more of a pearlier pink, whereas here we have a little bit more of a yellow hue to it. And then our last shade here is going to be a warm golden brown. So this is essentially going to be your warmer tone version of number one, Sand Dune. And let me get a pencil to label these. Just going to grab, just grab, a, a, well, I have a lip pencil here, so we'll go ahead and use this. So let me just separate these so we can make sure we keep these, these separated. Uh, I don't want to put it put the numbers, well, we'll skip the numbers. We can figure out where everything is. But I wanna make sure we have space to swatch next to everything. So we've got one and two. And then let's see, which one? I think this is three. This is sun-dried driftwood. And yeah, so we're starting off with kind of this pale, dusty rose. That's actually the color of the carpeting I had in my house when I was growing up. Um, my mom loved pinks and blues, so our whole house is like pink and blue. This is a really beautiful cooler tone brown with a touch of, there's almost like a faint hint of mauve in it. You can see it doesn't look mauve at all, <laughs> but really pretty. This primer shade here, you can see again, it's going to just, it's kind of like all of these primers kind of have a hint of whatever colors in the palette. And then we have this deeper purple shade, but it's got a touch of burgundy in there. It's kind of like if you take burgundy and eggplant and you mix them together. And so that's three, sun-dried driftwood. All right, let me check on the comments. So, yes, uh, Sand Dune is like YSL Store Dolls. Uh, I ordered that one, so I can't wait to get it. I'm really eager for that one. I ordered for the Store Dolls, the uh, Babylon Roses, and whatever the last one was that um, had like the silver and gold. I forget exactly what was in it. But those were, were the three that I ordered from YSL. And if you haven't seen... Bloomingdale's did restock the majority of the shades. There were two that were still only available for store pickup, but the rest of them were restocked today. And then let's see here. So Amy, just to catch you up, we have one, two, and three here. Shade number three in each of these, you can barely see. It's a primer shade. 
can see the first one is more of a soft pink. We have more of a soft gold. And this actually is kind of more of a soft champagne with like a touch of rose. And I ordered these directly from Clay de Poe. They are only available on the Clay de Poe website at the moment, but they'll be available at other retailers in a couple of weeks. So I believe that's going to be right around the beginning of August. And this one here is number four, Ocean Sunrise. I don't understand the name for this one personally. <laughs> Doesn't remind me of an Ocean Sunrise, but I thought it was really pretty. And can see this is going to be kind of a tan beige shade and then we have this brown this is kind of like a, a rich brown you've got some redness to it uh, really pretty this primer I mean on my finger it looks more silvery in the pan it looks more gold so yeah it's really more of a soft gold primer shade and then last up we have a deep brown and this is going to be cooler in tone. This just reminded me of, you know, a classic brown neutral palette, you know, that we've seen before, like some of the ones from uh, Tom Ford, like not Mink Mirage, but in that, that family. Uh, so things like that. So I had to pick that one up and let's see here. So five, six, seven, eight. I passed on those for now. <laughs> and then I got, uh, let's see here, 9, 10, no, 10, 11, and 12. So let's see here which one is 10 is seagrass. So this is number 10. And I mean, pretty. So we're going to swatch these on the other arm here. We have kind of this mossy green. It really looks like algae. So, <laughs> you know, I think it's aptly named there. Then we have this shimmery, kind of one of those um, brownish green khaki camo shades. You can see it actually looks more brown. It kind of, you can see like a glint of green, but it's really going to be more of a, a brown tone shade. And you've got some shimmer. This, these primers, I just press it down. You can see it's definitely going to be more of that cream formula here. And this is going to be a much deeper primer. You can definitely see this one a lot better. And then we have this more blue green. So it reminds me more of, you know, like um, a blue spruce. So we definitely have like a blue base in this green shade here. So that is number 10 and let's see here. Really not great <laughs> drawing on there. I went totally crooked. And then take a look at this one. This is 11 Azure Blue Sea. And look, we already have a Sadie hair sticking to the sticker on the back. She uh, was trying to go through the box. Her bark box came at the same time. So she was very eager. <laughs> She's very eager for all packaging though. She really likes boxes. So this is gonna be a light blue. And I have to say it's a bit more pigmented than I thought it was gonna be, which is a good thing. Uh, I think a lot of the Clay de Poe quads in the past, they've been very pale on the pigmentation, particularly the limited edition holiday quads. These are definitely going to be, um, you know, more pigmented, more buildable. They're smoother, silkier, creamier in texture. This is going to be, actually, I think I contaminated that. Let me swatch that again. Hold on. I have a wipe here. All right. Yeah, so that's really just going to be more of an ivory shade. The first time I swatched it, I think I still had a little blue on my finger. So cleaned that off. And then we have kind of this deep navy. And you can see that the base on this navy where it kind of tails off, it does have a little bit of black, but it's not going to be an overwhelming black base like you get with so many dark blues. So I think it is really, this is a beautiful, beautiful quad. I'm very happy with that. And I'm happy to see, you know, a lot of these blue quads 
we get so many other colors mixed in or they're very subdued. This is definitely like a true blue quad. This one here is 12 purple ocean twilight. I mean, look at that. I'm most excited for this shade. Actually, the two shades. I mean, this looks like a beautiful taupe as well. Let me just, I'm just using this to clean my fingers real quickly. It's kind of, I've got all these cloths here, but it, it did kind of dry up a little bit. So let me just make sure it's fresh. And let's go ahead and swatch this purple. Wow. This is pretty. I mean, this is the color I always wanted my bedroom to be growing up. And then every time, it, we weren't allowed to change the colors of our bedrooms very frequently. I think I did it maybe two or three times ever. Um, and... I always end up going with something more. I had this color once in like a pale teal. And that's what I always went with, even though I always wanted purple. So weird. But you can see that this lavender shade here does have a little bit of a touch of pink to it, but it is pretty neutral, pretty, pretty even mix of pink and blue. This more taupey shade here has a touch of like pink in there. And then this primer shade is going to be more of a soft pink. And you can see there's a little bit of warmth to that pink. It's not going to be a cool tone pink. And then our last shade here is more of, wow. Um, you know, this is more of like an amethyst. I think that is an absolutely stunning quad. This is so pretty. It's not too purple, right? It, that's what Anna just said too, or Anna. And you can see, you know, you've definitely got shades in here that can help prevent it from being like too in your face. This is gorgeous. So these three, and number one, those are my my top four. I absolutely love those. I can see number one, Sand Dune, being something I use every day. I really like all of these, actually. I'm very happy with the ones I picked up. So just to go through them again, we have one, Sand Dune, two, Beach Pebbles, three, Sun Dried Driftwood, and four, this one is Ocean Sunrise. Again, I don't know where the ocean sunrise comes from that. And then we have 10 seagrass, 11 azure blue sea, and 12 purple ocean twilight. So I think they're all really pretty. What I like about number three is how you do have some mauve in there, but it's not too pink, but it's not your normal browns either. It's kind of more of a mix. I really like number four, how you've got like little glints of like mossy green in there, yet without being green. So people who don't really like green shadows, this is a way to get a little bit of that vibe without actually being green. So I just, I think these are gorgeous. Formula wise, these feel very silky. I mean, if you think about like the best Dior palettes that we've had, you know, in the older formula, it's like that, but elevate it. So texturally, that's what they remind me of more. You've got more of that silky, very smooth texture, but it feels even smoother, like even more finely milled than the Dior. So I mean, you can see after touching them, we don't really have any kick up. You can see the primer is definitely going to be a creamy shade. Let's go ahead. And which one's fuzzy on camera, Elaine? Is it fuzzy for everybody or um, let me know if, uh, if there's any audio or visual issues right now. And let's see here. Ronnie, I love that bedroom and bathroom lavender. Perfect. My daughter, my oldest daughter, she ended up painting her room purple and she wanted a pink room, but she ended up switching at the last minute. So she's got a purple room and a pink bathroom. <laughs> and all right, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and try on one of the palettes first. We'll just see how everything performs on the eyes. And then we'll go ahead and do comparisons. So start thinking, let me know which comparisons you would like. Hi, Jocelyn. Okay. And while you're thinking about which comparisons you want to see, just one more time, we have one, Sand Dune, two, Beach Pebbles, three, Sun Dried Driftwood, four, Ocean Sunrise, 10, Seagrass, 11, Azure Blue Sea, 
and 12 purple ocean twilight and yeah so think about that and let's try let's try number two beach pebbles so i'm gonna go ahead and click this in so if you have never done these before again these will just snap in and if you want to take it out there's actually a little lip here you can actually just lift it out yourself um there we go and you can move them around so that's how the cases work. Again, I do wish they were magnetic just so you could use a larger palette if you wanted to, but oh well. <laughs> so uh, let's see here. I'm going to start off, let's use the applicators. So I'm going to take the white one and we'll use the primer and we're going to use beach pebbles here. And I'm going to try and get as close as I can. I can't do the close-ups on the live stream that I do with the full videos, but of course I'll have full videos on all of these and I'll include eye swatches for these as well. And you can see the primer is going on nicely. It's it doesn't really feel much like anything. Like it feels like a smooth cream, but once it's on, it like blends out and I don't feel any tackiness. Um, it kind of like sinks in. So you don't really have any texture on the eyelid from the actual primer. So that's, that's nice. So it just gives a nice base and it's supposed to help grip the shadows in particular. These are not camouflaging primers. The deepest primer again is going to be the one here in number 10 seagrass. And let's see here for brushes. I've got the What's a Beauty R103? And I'm going to go into this shade here for the crease. Goes on very easily. I don't think it looks patchy or anything. Very easy to kind of spread out. All right, so that looks good. And then, let's see here. Take my favorite, the soft shader. And let's go in, we'll start with this darker shade here at the bottom. And we'll just pat this on. You can see there's a bit of a sheen to it. It is gonna be a satin shade here. And really pretty. I have to say, I'm really, really loving the texture of these. I really love these textures. I mean, you know, I've been kind of upset that Dior formula has changed so much, but this is better. So can't be too upset. I mean, they're so smoothly blended that they're almost a cream. I actually have too much product on that. I just wanted to see what it would do. But that, wow. I mean... That's, I love this. So I will definitely update you guys on the wear and see how this performs like all day. But look at this. That is so easy. So nice to use. Thank you so much, Sherry. <laughs> and um, yeah, I have to say, this is really, really a great formula so far. So I'm hoping that it will last all day without creasing. It feels like it's going to. And let's go ahead and move on to comparisons. So let me go ahead and see if anybody has put anything in here. Purple quad is everything. It definitely is. I really like it. Thank you so much, Danielle. The lipstick is actually going to be one of the Clay de Po liquids in 201 Calanthe Orchid. And it's, I love this shade. So um, torn between three and four. It's hard. They're definitely really great. The Suku Summer Purple Quad and the White Compact. All right. I have that sitting right here because I've been using it all the time. <laughs> so it's actually sitting right here. Let's go ahead and look at this one. So we've got the purple. And by the way, for those of you who are wondering, this is number 126 from Suku. Let's Oh, I put it on the wrong hand. We'll put it on my um, hand here and hold that over. 
And the one thing about the Suku here, though, is that we do have this uh, dual chrome shade. So we've got that light topper there. You can't really see the topper. It is just a little bit of sparkle. And then we have kind of this mauvey shade, the duochrome, and a deeper plum. So when we compare this to the purple, <laughs> really kind of messed that up. Uh, you can see that the duochrome definitely is going to have a bit more of a blue base. This lavender shade is something we don't have. But the Suku, this shade and this shade, they are going to be pretty similar to these two shades from the plate of Poe. So let's just hold those up together. So we're looking at these two here being very similar to these two. And even though this one looks more brown, they're still pretty close on the skin. Let's hold it. Well, I guess I'll hold it this way. So you can kind of see it. So yeah, those are pretty close. And let's see here. Um, yeah, I really can't wait to get that YSL. Uh, I'm hoping that comes soon. And then can the primer be used as a shadow or is it specifically a primer only? You can definitely use it as a shadow if you want, but it does have a different texture. Um, so if you use it just as a shadow, you're just going to, it's more of like when you use a highlighter as an eyeshadow and you have just a little bit of a sheen. And so you're not going to get much color. You can kind of see just looking at that. If you use it with like an eyeliner and you just want like a little hint of sheen, but not really any color, that's going to be a great look with the primer. Thank you so much, Rosie. You guys are very sweet. And let's see here. Uh, how these compare texture wise to the Suku eyeshadows. Texturally, the Suku shadows are, they feel a little bit more powder, particularly like the mattes. If you're familiar with the Suku mattes, they are a pressed powder that's very, very smooth, but you can feel that there's a little bit of grip to it. So like if you touch it with your finger, you can feel just a little bit of texture from that. Whereas the clay de po, when you touch that with your fingers, you know, it just feels a little bit smoother, a little silkier. So, um, you know, it's just different. They're both very, very finely milled. The shimmers and everything, I I feel like really it's just that the clay de po get to the point of being so finely milled that they're almost a cream when you gather that product up. The suku isn't quite there. It stays more into that powder texture. Aside from certain shades, you know, occasionally you'll get some that do feel creamier like this uh, duochrome shade here. Sometimes some of the, some of the satins are like that, but in general, the clay de po still feel even creamier. So yeah, I mean, just it's going to end up being a personal preference there. And wow, thank you guys so much. Thank you, Nancy. <laughs> um, let's see here. So what else do we have? So texture wise, Suku quads, they're definitely similar to the Suku quads. Um, Suku has really, since they switched to the signature color eyes formula, they have really gotten a little bit more pigmented in their shades and so forth. So I would say that these are definitely kind of following suit with that in the terms of, in terms of pigmentation and so forth. And number three, Rose, Rose Topaz Tom Ford. All right. So this is the rest of my cases here. Just. I have that right here and I keep all of the box lids to like the Chanel and Dior boxes when you get the gift box. I use the box lids to hold all of my shadows inside my drawers instead of drawer inserts and so just going through that. So this is number uh, 35 Rose Topaz from Tom Ford. And we're going to be looking at number three, which is Sun-Dried Driftwood. Let's put that 
right here so you can kind of see them. You can see that the color stories are definitely very, very similar here. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. And let me go ahead. I'm going to swatch this right next to it. So that's our first shade from Rose Topaz. You can see it's going to be peachier, whereas the clay to is a little bit rosier. Our second shade, this is, let's go over that one more time. This is more of your warm champagne shade. So that's going to actually be a little bit more equivalent to the primer, I think. And then we've got a little bit more of a hint of taupe. Just going over that one more time here. But you can see it's warmer in tone than the sun-dried driftwood. And then our last shade here is a brown. And we're missing that kind of, you know, mauve tone that we get in the sun-dried driftwood. So I would say that the Tom Ford is very similar in color story, but it runs warmer than the Clay de Poe. This would essentially be a cooler, slightly pinker uh, quad compared to the Rose Topaz. And then let's see here. What else do we have? How do they compare to old Clay de Poe? All right, so let me pull one of those out real quickly just so we can definitely be very clear. Now, I do think, in my opinion, the ones from the holidays versus the ones from like everyday permanent range, they're different. I find that some of the holiday ones are going to be paler in, I'm just going to swatch this one here. They're paler in pigmentation when you put them on. These also, some of them can be a little bit chalkier as well. You know what? I shouldn't have. Shouldn't have done it on this hand again, <laughs> but oh well. So this one here is Holiday from a few years ago, two or three years ago. This is 321 Magnificent Plumage. And these are going to be the shades in here. And you can see that our blue is kind of right in between the two in number 11. And our purple is slightly more blue based than the lightest shade here in number 12. But the difference is these, when you put them on the eyes, they really kind of blend out and become lighter and more sheer. These are not as pigmented as they look in the swatches. This formula in this particular quad is a little bit drier. It's a little chalkier in comparison to the new ones, which are definitely very, very creamy. So this one here, oh, let's see here. What is this one called? This is... 306. And this is one of my favorites. I use this one all the time. I'm actually surprised they don't have a color story quite like this one. Um, but let's see here. Let's, we're going to put this one over here next to number three. And these, I think in the permanent line are creamier than the one that I just swatched, but the new ones feel even creamier than these. I wouldn't say significantly more, but a little bit more. And these are going to get a little bit more powder up than the new ones. So this is Quad 306 from the old formula versus Sun-Dried Driftwood. I think this is probably your cl closest quad that has these tones. This shade here is very, very similar to the last one in Sun-Dried Driftwood. We have kind of this like soft pearly pink we have a soft pink here. It doesn't really have that same pearlescence. It's going to be a little bit warmer and peachier. And then we have a silver and a black. So I would say the old formula is still going to be fairly similar to the new formula, but it had the new formula does seem to be enhanced. And of course, that primer shade is definitely a difference here. And all right, let's see here. Um... How do these compare to Surratt? Okay, so the Surratt shadows, let me just get those. All right, so they, these are gonna be your regular shadows. The Surratt hologram shadows do have a very similar creaminess to them, but they're actually um, gonna be a little bit softer in formula. So those can really indent a bit more. The, the hologram ones, well, let me just go ahead and get those too. 
The halograms are these ones up here. So these are going to be like their duochrome shades and so forth. So this one here is Aurora. And I'm just going to put that right here. It's a very creamy texture, but when you put it on, it's very, very thin. Um, so you don't really feel, you know, you don't feel a lot of texture or anything from it. You can see it can be kind of sheer. This is beautiful on top of a black base. Now our traditional Surat shadows, here is Dore, which is gonna be a satin. And let's go ahead, I think this might be closest to the second shade here in Seagrass. These are like an incredibly silky powder, but again, they're not quite as creamy as the Clay de Peau. The Clay de Peau gets to be a creamier formula. Um, let's see here. Let's watch another one here. This is Moss. And let's go ahead and just put that one right here. So I would say that this shade here in Seagrass is kind of a mix of Moss and Dore. They're not, it's not quite a perfect match. You can see that the Surat are going to be more powdery as well. They're going to have a bit more kick up from them. They're really going to be just a really sheer silky powder, whereas the Clay de Peau is just, again, getting to that point where it's starting to turn to a cream. So think about when you're blending something, um, you know, it's to the point where let's say, you know, you're, you're mixing, I don't know if you guys have ever done this, but if you're making powdered sugar, you take you know, regular sugar and you put it in a blender and you have to mix it on high speed for quite a while. And then it turns into that fluffy powdered sugar. So I feel like the Surat has stopped when we have gotten to the point where it's just a super, super finely milled sugar. And the Clay de Peau has continued on for a couple more minutes till it gets to that powdered sugar consistency, which actually starts clumping around the blades and so forth because it's now a little creamier in texture, is a little fluffier. So I think that's kind of the difference there. Um, the Clay de Peau are just slightly more finely milled. They are a very expensive eyeshadow, um, particularly if you're buying the cases and so forth. So I would definitely recommend trying to get these on sale. Again, they will be at other department stores uh, in a couple of weeks, but right now the Clay de Peau website is uh, you know, the exclusive retailer at this moment. So let's see here. We've got Rose Topaz, vote number 10. Yeah, that's fantastic. And Anna, I think your mom would love the purple one. And which one's creamier in texture? Which one are you, what are you referring to? Um, creamier in texture would be the Clay de Peau so far. These are definitely you know, the, the creamiest uh, for powder shadows. And do I think four is cool tone? I think, you know, actually, if you go onto the Clay de Peau website and you scroll to the bottom of the page where they have the quads, let me see if I can pull it up and show you. But if you, the page that has the full quads, it's, their website's a little bit of a mess because they, um, if you want to change the picture of the quads, you have to go to the refill page. Their pictures are not changing on the link to the entire quads. But if you do go to the page with all of the quads and you scroll to the bottom, they have, they have the quads broken up into neutral, warm, and cool. So number four, they have is neutral. I would have to agree with that. Um, but some of these did surprise me. So they have the cool ones listed as one sand dune, three sun dried driftwood, six caviar pool or pearls, and 11 azure blue sea. So those are listed as cool tones. And then neutral, they have four ocean sunrise, 10 seagrass. They also have nine pink coral shells and then the 12 purple ocean twilight. I would say this is going to be cooler in tone. It's pretty neutral for a purple palette, but it's still cool in tone. In my opinion, 
The seagrass, I can see this one being more neutral because we do have more of an even mix of cooler tone shades. This is definitely a cool deep green versus like the warmer shades. So I can see this one being classified as neutral, but I do think that this purple one really runs a bit cooler. And then for warm, they have number two, beach pebbles, which I would agree with. Five, coral reef, seven, starlight splendor, and eight, warm ocean sunset. So those are the ones they have listed. So I would say that, yes, this is pretty neutral, actually, for number four. And let's see, is the green CDP at all like Tom Ford Velour Khaki? Good question. Let's swatch that. I also wanted to take a look at the Dior Jungle palette because that one, that really made me think of it as well. Let's see, where is Velour Khaki? must have it sitting out somewhere because dropping things. I just went through these twice and it's not in my box. So give me a second and I will locate that one. But in the meantime, let me pull out the Dior. So these are my Dior shadows. And let's see here. So let's look at Jungle. Here's new look. I wanted to look at new look as well. New look made me think of, I don't remember which one before. I've got denim here. We can look at that. Soft cashmere. And oh, my jungle's not in here either. What's up with this? I must have my green ones separated for some reason which means that they're sitting in a box at my feet somewhere. So I'll get to that. Um, I'm gonna put those down. And while I'm glancing around for that, let me just take a look at these here. So this is 669 Soft Cashmere. This is the old Dior formula. We're gonna put this going down here near number one, Sand Dune, and number two, Beach Pebbles. Beach Pebbles also made me think of a new dress from Dior, which I do not have, but they do look similar. So this is soft cashmere. And you can see that Sand Dune is probably closest to it, but we do have a touch more gray and the shades are gonna be deeper in soft cashmere. Again, the clay de Poe is gonna be even smoother than those old Dior. And then this one here is denim. Let's go ahead and look at denim. It's a really pretty turquoise. It's a little bit more blue than the deeper shade in the azure. We've got this beautiful metallic teal green, this kind of, you know, soft golden shade here. And then let's see, we've got this green, but then let's see how this blue compares can see that the blue in denim is actually going to be a bit more blue. It doesn't have as much black as a clay to pup. So that is going to be a fairly similar quad. And let's see here now for new luck. 
So new look. First, let's take a look at this burgundy shade here. I want to put that one right here so we can see how that compares to the shade in Sun Dried Driftwood. But the new look palette itself made me think more of number four. So I'm going to put the rest of the shades here. So you can see our shimmer shade is similar to the primer shade there. And then You know, I would say mixing these two shades together gives you this shade here. Mm, nude look, uh, new look might actually be, it's kind of a cross between three and four. All right, and then let me see for a second where these greens are. These are palettes that I have just been using. And I have khaki and jungle here. I haven't found the Tom Ford yet. Um, but let's take a look at these. So this is Jungle. Again, these top two shades aren't really going to be that similar here. I'm going to put those two right there because they're not really going to match up. Um, but we've got this brown. We have kind of a mossy green and a deeper green. So let's see how those compare. Mm, it's definitely deeper in the Dior. This kind of metallic mossy green is more golden than that in the clay de Poe. And moving on to the khaki palette. So this is the new Dior formula. Again, we're gonna put these two lighter ones or the two top shades over here. Those are not really going to be reminiscent. And then let's put the other three shades. We're gonna put them next to these. So again, it's more golden, more yellow tone. Then we have more of a true green. This is not gonna be in either of those palettes. And this, let me re that one, I kind of smudged it. Um, this shade here is kind of a, we'll put it here mossy green brown. It's going to have more brown in it than this shade in seagrass, but it is going to be fairly similar. And I just don't know where that lower khaki is. Here it is. So I only have so many boxes behind me, but everything is on the floor. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. I was in the process of going through and organizing all of my makeup when we went to get Sadie and I never finished. So it's all sitting in boxes. So you have that peach. You can see that this brown shade here is fairly similar, but it's more brown and it's got a little bit more of a satin hue to it. And then we have the two more green shades here. So let's see how those go. You know, I would say that this darker one is kind of similar to this, but there's more blue in here and these don't really match. So you can see they're similar, but they are not dupes. All right. So moving on, um, and where you can get previous clay to poe cases are supposed to have some previous CDP eyeshadow quads. You know, they have been out of stock for actually a long time. I have been trying to get my hands on them too because I wanted to put all of mine in quads. I'm still missing a couple. So if anybody finds them, please let me know. And so try calling Neiman's South Carolina. Okay, so I can try that. I know my store does not have them. Uh, discount retailers online. Okay, good idea. Thank you, Deborah. And 
You know, honestly, when I'm looking for a makeup item that has sold out everywhere, I call the Texas stores. They have a lot of, of stores and a lot of times I can find things that have sold out everywhere else. So just something to note, try, try Texas locations. So I always try to pick one like in a small town. Um, but yeah, that usually works for me. I, that's how I was able to get some of the, um, special gear long cherry blossom lipsticks over the years. And the ones that, you know, didn't really, that this was before gear long sold them on their website and each retailer would get like two of them. I ended up calling Texas locations. <laughs> so, um, just looked up for pant eyeshadow. All right. So I will have to go and do that. And my scroll bar is stuck. All right. And just going through this, the CDP is looking like what I want it below khaki to be. Yeah, it's really great. The refill is $75. So it is definitely expensive still. <laughs> so, um, you know, six grams of product. So it's not a bad size. And Macy's will get them, Nordstrom, Neiman Marcus, they're all going to get them uh, just not until August. And I'm very, very curious how it compares to the new mini YSLs. I will be getting those soon, um, hopefully in the next day or two. And let's see here. All right, do we have any other swatch comparisons. So let me know if you guys have any other requests while you are thinking about that and filling things in the chat. I'm going to go ahead and take a look at Violet Satine from Tom Ford as well. And well, you know what? I just kind of pulled out a whole bunch. I got Virgin Orchid. I don't think, well, let's compare that to number three, Sun Dried Driftwood. All right, so we got these four with these. So let me, I'm gonna squeeze that in right here. So yeah, Tom Ford Virgin Orchid is also similar to Clay to Poe Sun Dry Driftwood in number three. I think that's actually a pretty good match. And then those are not great. Let's take a look at New Dip with number one, Sand Dune. This is obviously going to be a frostier shadow in general. And let's see here. We'll just put this one at the top. Wow. You can see how frosty that is with the way the light's hitting it. That is definitely icy. So that's new dip. And what else do we have? Let's take a look at Violet Satine with the number 12. All right, you can see that the shade is more blue based. And then we have kind of these more movie shades. This is actually a lighter version of the Clay de Poe. You've got a bit more rose in there. Um, this one here is going to be more neutral, less rosy. This purple here, though, is more blue based. It's more eggplant. So I would say they're definitely different. This is going to be a rosier quad in general from Tom Ford. They're both fantastic though. I really like this one. So Lay de Feu, um, I don't think I have that one. I didn't pick up any of the new Soleil quads. Yeah, that's not one of the ones that I have. And let's see here. Was Suku 20th anniversary is going to be in September, but I have not seen a date yet, a specific date but they did say September and let's see here. 
All right. So do you guys have any other comparison requests? Let me know. And then if not, we can, um, you know, start signing off. I guess this here, the Dior Cool Neutrals, old formula. <laughs> um, this also has some great complementary shades to number one and number three. So if you've got that one, the YSL Deborah is on uh, Bloomingdale's and they restocked number 100 this morning. So it might still be there right now. So take a look. And if you don't follow me on Instagram, then follow me on the community tab on YouTube because I do post any sort of updates like that there. So it's a great way to get it. So you should be able to just kind of go to um, YouTube, if you have the app. And then if you hit like subscriptions, you'll see like the videos and anything from the community tab kind of just pops up there as well. So uh, it's a great way to keep track of, you know, notices and so forth. I put number two beach pebbles on my eyes. So this is going to be the warmer tone one. And I just think it's a really nice, like everyday, warm, soft brown. I haven't heard anything about the YSL. I've been keeping out of the conversation with that and haven't watched any reviews so that I can stay impartial until I try it. But I do know several of you guys have told me that they are amazing. So I can't wait to try those. And yeah, all right. So I think we are done unless anybody has any last minute requests. All right, if you do have any requests or anybody who is watching this at a later time, if you come up with a request, please, you know, just feel free to leave a comparison suggestion in the comments or DM me on Instagram. I'm at Alexis Jong on there. And I will be doing videos with all of these separately and maybe not like a separate video per se for all of them, but you'll be able to see these separately. We'll do eye swatches for the shades as well, but we do have a lot of comparisons here. So I won't necessarily repeat all of them unless, you know, let me know if you need to see something again. So, and which one do I prefer the older version or the newer one? I prefer the newer one so far, but we'll see how it performs all day. I will definitely leave a comment on here at the end of the day and let you guys know how it performed like with creasing and so forth. But just from, you know, initial impressions, I would say that the new one is creamier and I think it just feels silkier. So I like the newer version better. I like the older price tag better though. <laughs> so, um, all right. And I will take a look at the replay, Elaine. I'm not sure why it's fuzzy. Um, I'm so sorry to hear that though. And, oh, the Valentino lip blush is available now. I am gonna go and order those. And yeah, that's it. Thank you so much, Ronnie. And one that's a little deeper than new dress. I don't have new dress to look at exactly. I would say that this is probably our closest one to new dress. Uh, if you want something a little deeper, Mm, I don't think they have a quad that's exactly those same tones that are deeper, but I think that, let me go to their page real quickly. I think the, um, one of the ones I didn't get, let me see. This one, Starlight Splendor might be a good option. It's a little different in color story, but I think this one, it might be a good option uh, to be a similar. Cause I feel like these three shades are, aside from the pink, you know, are kind of similar to new dress there. So it's a possibility there. Um, but I would say Beach Pebbles is actually going to be lighter. And let me just double check how it performs if you layer it while we're on here. So let me just go over these swatches one more time and just see how much, if you can really build this more. Not really. So your colors are not gonna really get deeper. 
Um, but you could definitely blend these with a deeper shade from four to get them a little bit more pigmented. I think four is a, a nice compliment or number seven. And thank you guys so much for everything. Um, this was a lot of fun. And yeah, let me know if you want to do another live sometime. And I guess I will see you guys very soon. So uh, please let me know if you have any preferences as to which palettes I review first. Otherwise, I'm probably starting off with the ones I'm most drawn to, like 10, 11, 12, and 1. So, um, all right. Thank you so much. And I will see you guys very soon. And have a good day. Bye.